Hello friends, welcome back. So today we are looking at understanding data types and keywords. So starting with keywords. So what keywords means is that there are some certain words we can just use anyhow or use as a function name or use as a user defined function name or even a variable name. So we can't use some certain keywords like that. So these are example of them. There are actually many. So from time to time, as we progress through this lecture, you'll get to understand to use each and every one of them. Okay. So for today, we are focusing on this four, this four which I made bold here. That's the car, the double, the floats, the ins. Okay. So now let's start with what the car data type means. So computers only store numeric code, like I've said um, in the introduction part, that computers understand only binary code. All right, they don't understand source code, which, are, which is our English coding. Okay, so they don't understand binary numbers, which is zero and one. So they work in bytes. So imagine you, you are coding, a, you are putting a, a letter, for example, maybe you represent a variable as letter A or something. How would your computer know this is actually A? Gone, gone, gone. Like, how, <laughs> like how would they know this is A, letter A? So there's a way of doing that. So that's where the character the type the data type comes to play. So computers only store in numeric code. So therefore the characters, for example, A, small letter A, B, small letter B, and so on, which we are going to see uh, uh, many of them. So all of them have a unique numeric code, okay, which the computer will in which the compiler will interpret to the computer. All right. So the character that's the car data type takes one byte in memory space. Remember, I said one byte is equal to eight bits. So, character data type holds one byte of memory, okay, in storage memory. So, the format specifier of the car data type is actually percent C. We are going to um, practicalize all these aspects, all these talks we have been saying here, so you understand better what all this stuff means, okay. Um, I think let me just let me highlight this one too. Let me highlight this size of. So we're going to use that also. Okay, good. So first of all, let me just show you a picture of what character data, um, data type means. So this is an ASCII standard character table. Okay, so you can see all these red parts are the characters. You can see A, B, C, D. You can also see other symbols too. There are also characters. You can see plus, times, all of them as a number representation for the compiler and your computer to know all right so even small letter a has a different numeric value so small letter a is actually 9 m79 that is its decimal value is 79 character big a character letter a is actually 65 okay so this one is for the decimal values also is for the extra this um extra decimal value this one is the octa decimal values all right so I think we'll focus more on the decimal values and maybe a little of the extra decimal. Okay. So but later on you understand how to really convert those two. So most of the time we are usually like focusing on the decimal. All right. So this is just a glimpse of how characters are and how they are numeric code. This is a standard values for numeric code for each of these characters. Standard. All right. So just keep that at the back of your mind. Um, so let me just go to my code block and let's do some better explanation of some certain things and i think before before i continue let me make let me mention something there's also a character called the null character okay so the character called the null character so it actually takes a byte also remember i said all characters are storage space of one byte Okay, but if I remember a byte is equal to one byte, like I said, it's equal to eight bits. And what do we mean by bits? Like when I say eight bits, for example, it can be something like this zero zero one 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 zero two four six eight. So something like this is a is what bits are. So since I say eight bits, that means to have eight representation that is zero and one it can be scattered in here so you can have so if you can't see the number i think it should be eight this is two four six eight so this is like an example of a byte all right so now talking about this null character i said so this null character is just like a special character that's its own 
bits everything is zero there's no one at all so that is one special thing about the null character you understand how to apply this null character later when we'll be dealing with arrays and the likes so just keep this at the back of your mind too all right um just erase this then all right so let's do some practical feeling about all these characters that are the same so first um okay as usual we have to start with our preprocessor hash include we're going to use our standard library of standard input and outputs okay so as usual we're going to start with our main function which is actually an integer by default okay um all right so i want to show you how to declare character variables so let's say for example if i have two variables let's say i i want to do um, something like this x is equal to i want it to represent a character a now i want to watch something here you can no notice i use single quotes in this part so that is how you must always represent characters if you want to assign a character to a variable okay to assign a character to a variable you have to use these single quotes don't use double quotes if you use double quotes what you are doing you are assigning a string not a character so this is different i won't say how the color is even different thank god for code blocks with the rates make um so you understand when you see some mistakes and notice the color changes so a string is different from a character all right so just keep that at the back of your, at the back of your mind strings can take multiple letters like this okay but the character is, is taking only one letter and this time i want to focus on a alone so this is how to um use variables and assign so let me just do one more so we have y also equal to let me put another character there let me say for mf for example okay let me close this remember I always close each of them with the semicolon so to make it a statement all right so one thing is that after you all after you created your variables you have to declare the variables so you can just scroll let me just take it up here then i can declare my variables i can say int x um no not int this time remember I'm dealing with characters so i'm going to use the car data type so i'll say car x and at the same time i can then say also car y since we're dealing with characters so instead of doing it this other way you can see this way in a single line okay so that's how to declare it okay so then next thing we can choose to do then is to and okay let me just say one more thing let's take for, remember this table i showed you let's go back to that table so looking at this part now we have a and we know that its numeric value in decimal is actually 65. so at the same time you, there's a way you can call this 65 also that will bring the same a back to you okay so we are going to look at how to go about that soon so we are going to look at how to go about that soon so for now let us focus on this aspect first so i'm going to print so i'm going to print the character for i want to print i want to use the character specifier itself looking at this stuff we said the format specifier for a character is c so if I say something, if I say percent C and I use my new line as usual, my new line backspace character. Okay. So if I say X, which means what this stuff is trying to say is that this part I'm going I want to print I want to print X and I want to put it in a character format. That means it's going to print this A for me exactly the way A is. Okay. Let me just say okay points oh what just happened now let me just add some things for text so print it's character okay so let me run oh yeah if i run this return zero i think we are all good now so let me go build this So looking at the outputs here we are we have points 
its character a which is actually indeed the character a all right but now if for example we want to get the um value for where is that stop okay we want to get the value of the character for example we have a year and we know that the decimal value is 65 so for us to do that we will then need to use another specifier for decimals which we mostly use for integers though which we'll soon talk about integers so if i remove this percent c and i put d and i run this stuff again we'll see the difference in the answer now you can see now we have 65 which is the same 65 that is in our standard table there you can see a is 65 so just, that's just how to like play around it also you can do the same thing for hexadecimal remember looking at this we have the decimal which is like the whole number we have the hexadecimal all right so for the hexadecimal we just put our x there so if i can't let me close this and build and run again so you can see this shows us a is 41 so let's check our table to confirm if my system is already saying the truth so you can see 41 for the hexadecimal so that's just how to play uh, play around with it all right um now i want to do something let me clean let me remove this my f also applies the same way like i want to do for f now for example i can just i'll just remove this so um x and put for y since y is the variable i used to represent x okay so it's going to print for me the f numeric code okay let's just quickly look at that if i do what i actually wanted to do so for the f that is the small letter f that's 66 so let's check the table to confirm small letter f look at small letter f here the right side that's small letter f okay that's 102 102 wait let's check maybe i made a mistake somewhere okay oh yeah i'm, I'm dealing with x the hexadecimal let's check the hexadecimal right there so f okay yeah it's 66 is the decimal that is 102 okay so we'll just confirm the decimal too so i'll put d here i'll close and let me build again you can see here yeah, we are on track you can see 102 all right um now let's do something let me do something like i want to compute of them together in one point f function so i'll say characters of x uh, character or rather name is numeric numeric code for x is percent d and for y percent d also so i'm going to I want to print for x and for y so what this stuff means remember the first when the first double quotes just a place where i can write your normal text words okay but then for the print f this other part will now be the variables you are referring it to it to print so each of these variables this x will take this first d specifier here okay why this y will take this second d I, like respectively the way they are arranged that's how they will take it each of them so that means this x will print out the numeric code for a character a why this y percent d will take the number the numeric code for decimal in our small for small letter f so let's view this and see so you can see this is what we just did here so the numeric code for x is 65 and for y is 102 which is correct all right all right so this is just like another you first you just learned something about how to add multiple how to call multiple store variables inside the same print f all right now there's also there's something i wanted to do so let's just quickly do that now um oh you know what let's just stick with this format but i'll just make some changes here um we know that our a in short we've used a too much let's see something else let me look at the table let's see something else okay let's use this plus sign mm, no that's not i know let's use a number 
a number value. I'm sure, no, before we use a number value, okay, let's just use, let's just make it basic first. Let's just use small letter A. Let's use small letter A. Then, looking at this, our table, look at small letter A here. Yeah, you can see the decimal value is 97, 97 here. Yeah. Okay. So, now I want to put 97 here. Yeah. Now, I'm declaring 97. And mind you, remember that this Y is also in car. I declare it as character, not integer. The same thing with the X. I declare them as character. All right. So, what this means is that if I am to... Find the numeric code of X here to print D to give me some 97 here in this part. So for Y, for Y character, this one will give me the actual character for Y, which means I'm going to change this D to C. Because this time I'm putting the decimal number and I want to go back to giving me the character letter. Alright, so I'm printing for X and I'm printing for y at the same time so let's just output what i'm trying to do so you can see now our small letter a is 97 which is the which is what is written here for x okay we declare that um, character a in our x variable so it is 97 so now i put that still 97 inside our y so i declare the y as 97 then i want to go back and get what the character would be then it still told me that okay the character 97 still represents a so that's why I use the character here C for the character specifier, all right? I use D to get the decimal values of that character. So I hope you understand this stuff I just explained now. If it's just for you to know how to go vice versa, how to switch each of them, all right? So let's just do one more. Let's just do one more, like maybe this plus now that I wanted to do before. So this plus sign is a character and it has 43 in decimal okay so let me change let me just change this place to 43 and let's see if it will print that plus for us so let me run this you can see it prints that plus for us in our character set so 43 represents plus sign okay in the character so that is just what all it that's just the brief introduction about what characters represents in c all right and let me just make mention of one thing like see the way we declare this this is actually a nice way of declaring i think i can choose to declare it directly like this okay so that means you are just going to remove this one so let me just comment this one and everything will still work perfectly for you all right so it's just a common practice to just do it this way so everything will just look well organized in the way all right, so I just felt I should just let you know that also. So I think this is all about talking about character. Character. Let's move. To, let's move on. So now let's talk about the int, the int data type. So the int data type. Well, we've already particularized this int data type here because we've used the format specifier as percent d. So we've already understood how to use percent d. I think we also used that in the last mathematics calculation. So integer data type is very often used. So there's no much thing for me to say concerning this. But the only thing I would still need to say here is just for you to understand that the int keyword is actually an integer. And an integer, I'm talking about integers, we're talking about whole numbers. We're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, on and on like that. Those, those are what we mean by integers, okay? And integers, they don't have decimal points. They don't have decimal place. So they are not something like 1.2. No, this is not an integer. So integer has only whole numbers. All right. Now, if you notice, um, there was something I noticed, which I want to bring to your notice also, that C, the way C calls integers decimal. I understand that now school maths in our primary school or high school mathematics no we know integers as, as whole numbers i will know decimal numbers are you know decimal numbers that's like one point something or two point something that have decimal places right but in c whenever you're seeing that word decimal number just put it in your mind that they're talking about integer number that means they're talking about whole numbers all right so the real time they're really talking about the real decimal number which we know in our school Cool mathematics decimal <laughs> okay so the other time you are talking about that one is when you 
it's above. That one now is talking about floats. It's talking about double, which are still going to look that one. Look at this two later on. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. So that is why we're using percent D. This D represents decimal number. All right. So if you look at this sentence I wrote, I wrote integers numbers are also called whole numbers or decimal numbers, but with no actual decimal points. Okay. Let me put that but there. But with no actual decimal points, so they don't have decimal points. You just like kind of like a name they gave it so decimal numbers all right so the result of an integer is truncated simply means they don't take fractions so anything fraction any decimal is ignored they only take the first whole number only all right so i'm still going to see a practical calculation of how it sorry how it applies all right so now also note that in the memory space of integers for in the data type it takes four bytes that reminds me i've not even done the bytes for Character. So let's let me show you how to check for the bytes, the size of characters. So let's see for the character on now. I'm just going to say percent D. Then there's this size of operator, which is also a keyword. So I say size of car. Then print this. It should give me the size of it. You can see one. Sorry. So you can see one. So the data type of car or characters store only one byte of memory. All right, so they store only one byte in memory. So let me print this again. So to output a more explained sentence output for me. Okay, so one byte or one byte rather, not bytes <laughs> plural. Okay, so one byte in memory. That's what characters stores, all right. And another way of using the size of um, operator, the only time you can use this bracket is when you want to call the data type. Okay, so the other ways can choose to do it. If you want to use the character, if you want to call the data type, you can call the variable which you declared with this. If I say size of x, it will still give me one. So it is stored in one byte of memory. You can see it's still the same thing. So one byte in memory. That's where our character X is stored. The same thing with our Y. So anything character stores, stores in one byte of memory. All right, just keep that at the back of your mind. So now we are actually already in our int data type. So I've talked a lot about the int data type. And like I said, the size of int data type is four bytes. And four bytes, which means 32 bits. All right, so it means 32 bits. Remember, one byte is eight bits. So one byte, so eight times four, that's 32 bits eight times eight bits times four bytes to give you 32 bits all right so let's just see something for example if i choose to change this to int and i'm just change this to maybe any, any number then i do size of x now since i'm i declared it as integer so to show me the size of the storage space of integers so this should give me four so you can see four bytes in memory so that's this is where int data types are stored so under like, um, alternative way of running this code is just like the previous one you want to call the data type itself you are going to use brackets and put it you put the name of the data type so which is int so if i run this again it's just to give me the same outputs which is four bytes in memory all right i believe you are flowing well with this i'm very sure <laughs> Okay, so let's look at my board again. Okay, well now let's move on to the next part of float data type. Okay, so the float data type, if I'm talking about a floating data type, so floating points number contains a decimal point. So now this is like the decimal you know of, popularly know of in your school. Okay, decimal numbers that has decimal points at decimal places, you understand? So the Float data type also store as a storage of four bytes, okay, which is also that two bits. So you can test it the same way I test the ints. So you just need to put the float data type inside the size of operator to check, all right? So therefore, if float points number in C is at least six digits of precision, at least. So it depends on the size of your machine. So different machine has different precisions. So when we're talking about precision, we're talking about how many decimal places it can take, okay? So at least it takes six decimal places, all right? So the format specifier 
when using float is the percent of i mean percent f so that is special format specifier remember for integer the format specifier for integer is percent d for character it's format specifier is percent c now for floats it's format specifier is percent f all right so um what we just well, let's do something now i want to i want us to see the difference between the int data type and the floats data type in terms of mathematics division calculations let me just quickly put in some code very quickly Okay. So I'm going to declare it. So I say int norm, and I'm going to say float float norm. Okay. So I just got two variables now. And I assign them in this mathematic operators calculation. So let me print so I'll say the the integer division um is so for integers, I'm going to say percent D and create that new line space. So the first part int norm. Let me repeat it also for the next one. Print. So the float division is so since we are dealing with float, so I'm going to use the format specifier of percent F new line um that's floats norm which is the name of the variable so last okay returns you already this my returns you already all right so looking at this code i want us to see the difference in the results when it comes to solving some arithmetic calculation using different using these two kind of data types so we're, we're dividing the same thing here we're dividing the first one we're dividing that two divided by ten also, we're dividing the same that's divided by 10 here. Okay, but notice the first one we're using the int norm, so we're using the int data type. Why the FLT norm? We're using the float data type. All right, I don't know if this might confuse you. Probably I'm just put it at the side of it so we won't just get confused. Let me just put that int declaration at the side of it. I mean, this one will be floats, so that's the float keyword. Let me just comment this and this. I can choose to use double line comment, but let me just use single line for both of them. All right. So int norm one, I mean int norm this floats norm this. So now this first print f will print this first result for me. Why the second print f will print this second result for me? Now remember what I said the other time. I said integers are all numbers, so they take only all numbers. Now, realistically, now mathematics, if you use your calculator to do that two divided by ten, your result will be what? It will be three point two. That will be what we show in your calculator. But now, when it comes to C, your results will take only this theory, since you are using an integer here, and also you must don't forget to since you are using an integer, you have to declare the integer specifier, which is letter D. Or decimal okay and then we call the name of the variable here which you use in assigning it okay so remember that's two divided by ten on the norms your calculator will be 3.2 but in c programming it will give you only the whole number so to ignore the point two completely and give you only theory all right now for the float aspects for the floats now we talked about floats being and more like the decimal number that we popularly know of in our school okay so that's two that's two divided by ten 
in terms of floats we we give you theory points zero 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 two four six now you i know you are surprised why it will give you something like this now there's one rule here in terms of floats floats will show its real strength like its real decimal normal strength whenever there is a decimal value in one of the division like if you notice here yeah, we are dividing two integers here but there's no really there's no like decimal like for example if i have at least one decimal here then to alter the result from it but since both of them are integers it will still print only the theory integer but because we forced it by calling it floats that's why it prints the rest six precision decimals okay just so we know that it is still float since we chose to declare it as floats even though we are dividing two integer numbers, not and neither of them has any float features. Float feature talking about at least one of them should have a kind of decimal place something. You understand? But neither of them has both of them are integers. So that's why the result output is like this. So this is the first result output for the first one. This is the second result output for this. So let's print it and see it for ourselves. So you can see the results here. The integer division is theory, while the float division is 3.000 so that's how this 3.00 comes into play now let's see another example now so for example if i update this and i put point zero here the same point zero here so let me erase this now pause the video and tell me what will be the answer to the first one here the int okay Okay, I believe you've paused the video and you've attempted on your own. Now let's work on it together. Now, don't forget the first rule when it comes to integer, it must be an own number only. Okay, so if you do 32 divide 32.0 divided by 10, it will still give you in your normal calculator now, it will still give you 3.2. Okay, or even if it even if you have a calculator that will give you extra the extra zero, no other. But the major point about this is that in as much as we are calling declaring an integer here. It doesn't care about that decimal at all it's only theory to bring out so the answer here is still theory now let's move to the float so attempt the floats pause the video and attempt the floats all right i believe you've tried to attempt it so let's see if you're actually correct so now the other remember this rule i said the other time in the last example we did so at least this one now one of them has a decimal place so since one of them has a decimal place which is 32.0 at least one has that float features it means the result will come out normally as we know it in our calculator. So if however we have now that's two point zero divided by ten, like normally it will give us three point two, or you can put that zero there because of this first zero here, you understand? But now since we are dealing with float, I know float has at least six positions. So we are going to put the remaining six positions. So since we have two zero, we are going to add the remaining zero. So we have zero 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 to make it six decimal place. So that's the output for each of them. So let's print this and see for ourselves. So you can see the integer data type she gives us three, while the other one gives us three point two zero 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 zero. All right. So that is it. I believe we are really getting this very well now. So let's see one more example. So let's say we grab something like point zero here. Point zero, yeah. So let's print. Okay, before we print this, let's assess it ourselves. All right. So this one, thirty two divided by ten point zero. Ten point zero is still the same ten. Thirty divided by ten, we still focus only on the numbers. So this one is still theory regardless. Integer is very stubborn. You still take that its own number. It doesn't care about anything else. Okay. So now the floats for the floats one. So for the float spoon here, we have that divided by 10. So in as much as one of them has a decimal place value, it will still work as a normal decimal format. So that means it's still like the same formal answer that we have in that formal example that we did. Okay, so that's what this actually means. So I would like us to see one more tricky example. Okay, so let's look at this example here. If we have something like um, 
134 divided by 100. And it's 17 divided by 10. Now I want to just change everything to. Let me name this one on that on that thing. Um, Dave. I want to declare it as integer also. So since both of them are integers, I will change this one to, to decimal. That's the specifier here. And I'm going to change update this variable also to the new variable here, which I named the if now. Okay, let me change this my sentence here too. So we'll put that integer. So I want to ask a question now. What will be the answer to both of them? Do you think the answers will be the same? Pause the video and look at it. Tell me if the answer will be the same or the answers will be different in terms of dividing each of them and bringing out the outputs of the integer division with the D specifier. So what do you think will be the output for each of them? Pause the video and let, and let me know. Okay, I believe you've attempted it on your own. So let's see if you are correct. So let's run this code. You can see the answers are actually the same. <laughs> I know it is kind of like amazing. If you got it right, congrats. That means you are really understanding what you are saying here. Since if you don't get it right, don't worry. You will understand why this one looks somehow tricky, but it's actually not. It's still the same concept we've been saying. Okay, but it's no big deal. So since you know that 134 divided by 100, now normal mathematics calculator will give us 1.34. Okay, and this other one, 70 divided by 10, now normal calculator will give us 1.7. Then, since we are dealing with integers, we don't need decimals, so we are going to claim the 0.7 and we are going to claim the 0.34. So the output of this is 1, 1. So both of them are the same. So that is just how it came to be. All right. So you can see it's actually very simple, not as complex as we had thought. So let's move on. So we, lastly, we have the double data type. Wow, we tried. So the double data type, the double data type um, is actually like a float data type. Okay, it's just like an upgraded float data type, something like that. And in short, most times it's usually advisable to use the double, just that it has its own disadvantage because it takes a lot of memories. So that's why we choose, that's why there's existence of floats, right? I think we are using the double data type. Like the way we've been using floats since, we can also use double since both of them are still involved with decimal values, all right? Just that the difference about, if you are using double, the speed, the runtime, the execution time will be faster, like the speed of your code will be faster. If you are using floats, it will be slower in a way. But the only disadvantage of using double is that it will take more memory space, okay? So because the size of double, the size of double is actually eight bytes, which is two times of floats. Remember I would say the story size of floats is four bytes. So the storage size of double is actually times two, which is eight bytes. So it takes too much memory in a way. So two times of float memory. That's just the difference, all right? And to declare a double data type, if we still use the normal word, the double word, okay? Just like we'll be using floats, all right? So the double format, I mean, the double floating number has 15 digits of precision for 64 bits. In short, is that it has at least 10 um, digits of precision. I think that's for system bits system, which most laptops are not running on system bits. So it's even weird to get to see that. So for 64 bits machine, okay, like you know, your Windows 10, Windows 11, that usually most of that are 64 bits. So the decision, the precision is actually 16 digits. Remember the precision for the for for the floats is six digits, at least six digits, all right. Now, the format specifier for double is actually like floats also, it's just to add L to it. So the format specifier for double is percent LF. Okay, just like saying long floats. So long floats is just the same thing as saying double in a way. All right, so floats and double, most of the time they work hand in hand. They use the same specifier. Sometimes even if you even mistakenly remove this L and just use the float, it's true. It will still run successful for you. You understand? 
So we just keep that back in mind. Just note that double takes eight bytes of storage space than the float, and it has higher precision in terms of the number of decimal numbers it takes. Okay. So that's I think that's just it about double and the floats. Like now, maybe all the stuff we've been doing with floats here yeah, the other time. Um, whereby we do something like okay, maybe point zero in this place. Now let's just use double to still bring out the same kind of like results. So to bring the same decimal format results, just like the way floats has been doing. So I'm going to say LF. Let me use this. Alright, so if I should run this, the double the diff norm should give me 1.7000 and the likes. Okay. So let me build this now so you can see so it still works like the floats and the and i believe even if i move this long float here and still put it to this float it still goes successfully you can see all right so just note that at the back of your mind so that just how to use the double and how to use the floats and we can also you can confirm the size of it just like we have confirmed for character and for hints so the size of I'm going to say percent D. Um, let me say storage. I mean storage size. So let me see the size of operator. So storage size of loads. Of loads is. So storage size for floats is four bytes. We've said that before. So let's just confirm that, anyways. So as you can see here, yeah, it is four bytes. Storage size is four. So let me remove this and put double. So this should give us eight. So let me run this again. So you can see the storage size for this is eight. Storage size is eight or double. All right, so that's just it. So lastly, we are trying to add the last part of this. Let me just talk a bit about scientific notations. I'm not talking about scientific notation. I'm saying, for example, something like let me go to my whiteboard. So something like if we have maybe five thousand, you know, if you want to write this in scientific notation or in standard form, rather, I think that's the right. Let me use the right word like that. So standard form, so it will be something like five times 10 raised to power theory okay you know you are trying like raised to power theory so that kind of stuff so 10 raised to power theory not 10 times 100 theory we don't make mistake of that so 10 raised to power theory you get the gist so that's what um the scientific notation is about but this time around when it comes to scientific notation why is it this specifier called the percent e or can also use percent capital letter e so what this one does is that like for example that's five thousand the result will be like five e raised power theory something like that so it's trying to say five times ten raised to power theory so that's what it's saying so if it's capital that e to bring big e if it's small that e used to bring small e like this let's just particularize to see how it's really how it really shows here okay so let me just declare something and mind you this scientific notation only works for floats and double okay it doesn't work for anything else it only works for floats and double okay mm, what should i do should i let me just create another floats here let me not touch that double mm, let me just name this one um tests let me just give it any variable name okay so test i want to represent this test so let me not use let me just say x i want to represent x as 10,000 okay so now I want to print I want to print the scientific notation scientific notation so percent now since I'm doing with scientific notation I want to use small letter E as a format specifier all right so i'm um, declare i want to call the variable which is our x here 
Okay, don't forget we just created a new variable here, which means we need to declare it, right? The float has already declared it for us, so let me just declare it again. All right, remember this other way. I mean, if I to use this other way up, I'm, I'm to go back and declare the float of x here. Okay, so just keep that at the back of your mind. So let's quickly point this last part. So scientific notation of x. So I'm expressing this to give me 10, I mean, 1 times 10 to the power 4. So you can see the way it prints out. So 1.000, it prints out small. We're dealing with floats. That's why it brings the six decimal. The six precision digit precision so one point oh, just know it's just still it's still one okay so e which is just like an exponent of of times 10 raised power four all right so that is just that let me say um, let me put a negative sign here let me put a negative sign here so let's see what it will run for us i think this should give us minus one Okay, good. So you can say minus one e raised power four. Um, let's do a decimal aspect. So if we just apply zero point zero zero, I'm just say this part. So this should give me minus one times ten raised power minus three. So we see it here minus one e is power minus theory all right so that is just how to go about scientific notation so i think that's all about this topic we've been talking about data types understanding data types and keywords we've touched some keywords here at times goes on we're going to touch more c keywords all right so if you have questions you can leave it now in the comment box i will try to reply as quickly as i can but i hope you understand this tutorial very well i try breaking it down so it could be very very beginners friendly all right so have a lovely day make sure you practice don't just watch use your hand use your keyboard type type it to say play around it try different things all right so you can be testing their outputs that's how to learn all right so do have a lovely day bye